As we come from the racing, real racing side of things, our sim sport products are going to reflect that. What we are trying to build are products that will feel like the real thing. We will be building products that can handle some abuse. And for customers who are more in the field of an arcade or a gaming-like feeling, I think there will be better and, and other vendors than, than Acetech. What I've brought here is actually a generic pedal box from a, a real race car. It could fit into any race car, for example, a Formula Ford or something like that. And then we have here a brake disc and a brake caliber from a real race car also. And I'm just going to spend a, a few minutes uh, to talk to you about how this, uh, this stuff actually works. So to no big surprise, I assume here we have the throttle, here we have the brake pedal, and here we have the clutch. First thing you notice is that the brake pedals are actually in a straight angle relative to the floor. That's because when you brake, and you brake really hard, you know, real race car drivers often brake between 100 and 200 bars, you get the absolute best and most efficient braking when you hit the pedal 90 degrees. What you can also tell from, from these pedals, perhaps, is that you have the brake pedal most forward. So why is that? That's because if you have a tough moment and you're almost losing the car, the first pedal you want to touch is not really the throttle or the clutch, it's the brake pedal. So therefore we typically have the brake pedal a little bit more forward. As this is for a real race car, you can see there are two brake cylinders here. The reason for that is you have front brakes, you have rear brakes, and then by turning this, you can adjust the brake bias. We don't really need that in a simulator, uh, partly because you don't have front and rear brakes and uh, the bias you can do in the software. The way it works is that we pour in a brake fluid in, in these reservoirs into the, the cylinders. Then as you can see here, we have a, a stainless steel braided brake tube. Then we here have a brake caliber. We have the brake pads and we have the brake disc. So as you can see, this is heavy duty stuff. And that brings me to the next, I don't know if I should call it misunderstanding, but a brake pedal needs to be hard. You don't want a brake pedal that feels like this. Again, this is for gaming or for arcade mode. For real racing, you want a hard brake pedal. The harder, the better almost. Obviously, the brake pedals are not touching the disc at all times, because if it was, it would be dragging, you would be losing a lot of speed and you would burn up your, your brake pads. So the way a caliber like this works is, when you press the brake pedal, you move the fluid, which will then uh, compress the pistons, which again will make the brake pads touch the disc. And as soon as you let go of the throttle, the brake disc will retract itself a little bit. It's not like a millimeter, it's more like a tenth of a millimeter. So the brake disc again will spin freely. This is really how it works in a real race car. The fluid you use is kind of an aggressive fluid. Personally, I don't really like to see people use that for a simulator at home, because this is not what you want your kid to be drinking or your dog or your cat. And I'm sure if I got something like this on the carpet at home, my wife would not be really happy with me. But you need to do it in a real race car because you need a fluid with a high boiling point. Needless to say, as you can see, this brake caliber is actually golden. Uh, this gets really hot. So because of that, you want a, a, a brake fluid that can handle the temperature, but for sim sports, we don't really need that. Furthermore, as you can see here, there is actually a reservoir here where you can pour in the, the brake fluid. That's because in a race car, every time you go on track, you bleed the brakes so that if you have just small uh, air bubbles in the system, you can get rid of them. Why do you want to get rid of bubbles? Well, that's because if you have bubbles in the brake system, uh, number one, it's not very efficient because air can be compressed, the fluid cannot. And secondly, the brake pedal will be soft and you will have an unhappy race driver. So you really want air out. In a closed loop system, as in a, in a home simulator or in a simulator, you also don't really need this reservoir. You also don't really need the, uh, the brake lines this is how it works in a real race car, and that was the purpose of, uh, of this little session.